Hello, hello. Hello, it's Vicki. I am here on time. That's a really big step for Tuesday's live video. And today we're going to focus on Robin McClendon's July printables. There are a bunch. <laughs> she always promises a baker's dozen and then ends up giving you about 20 for $6. The link will be below in the instructions. And I wanted to show you what I did with, <clears throat> with Maze. That's M-A-Y-P-O-S-T-O-P-E-S, not M-A-I-Z-E, although I love corn. Um, the more I feel this book, the more I love it. It's got a light coat of deco art, matte media, it's the media, the artist line, matte medium. And it's, it's a thinner um, matte medium than some, which it each has its uh, benefits. You just got to grab one and go until you figure out which one works for you. But anyway, this feels like leather. Let's see if water beads up on it. Yep. I knew it would. I just knew it would. I could find it right there. But since we're grunging, it won't matter anyway, right? Just don't overdo the application. Okay. So you open it up, it's a gatefold sort of open up the cover and you don't have to do it like that you can have it like this it's up to you you open it up and here's a pocket this paper here is my butcher paper that I use and it's matcha tea dyed and the pinks that are coming up are from <clears throat> I don't know maybe an inkjet print I had beneath it or something and then here are my signatures. I'm playing with my focus here on what I'm going to do. There's my idea. You flip it to that. Of course, I would need to take a little more pain lining them up. But anyway, that's the rough plan. And then you open up this side and you have another one. This is my take on a child's crazy book, match, mix and match book, and another pocket. And this fits in a journal with the um, Traveler's Elastics. I forgot to switch it back. Let me go back. All right. Hey, David, William, Clint, Joycey. Joycey's what keeps things rolling. Hi, everybody. And any of the lurkers who come in, please encourage them to say hello. They don't have to participate. Just say hello. So anyway, these are Robin's May printables. And there are, I think, three videos that it took to make that little puppy. So we'll put that right there. Now, before we jump into that, let me tell you what I've been doing the last couple of days. Been getting back to my student studies. I'm a perpetual student. I think y'all know that. This is from a watercolor artist named Joyce Hicks. And she has some paints with Da Vinci Paint Company, which is an American company. And they give, they give more paint for the buck than other companies do. And their quality is excellent. So she came out with something called Mother Violet and Mother Earth. And 
And <clears throat> they, the company says what they, which pigments they put in them, but they don't tell you what pigment or how much. So I played with it. The, the reason I did that, I usually don't. I just assume by the tube. Um, this one's not available yet in a tube. This one just now is. But mother color in painting means that you use one, one or two colors all the way through. So like there might be a little bit of this lavender mixed in with every other color on the palette that you've chosen. And the mother part of it means that it encompasses everything. It gives you continuity. So that's the theory behind the mother color. So I made some little samples. This one is close. That one's not too far. But when you're mixing your own, you're going to have, always have variations because of how much is in there. And so then I took the mother color, uh, mother violet, made a swatch, and then put each of the other colors that she uses on her palette um, to see what they do with the mother color. So these are the cool colors because they're based on the purple. Yeah, those are coolish. But so is the green. Anyway, here's the green. The same palette that she's using, but you can see how the colors. Um, in this case, I'd almost call this the warm. She calls one of them warm, one of them cool. So like this would be in your sunny areas, and this would be in your shadow areas. And green, you know, it can go either way. So can purple. So there you go. But anyway, that's what I've been doing. And then I kind of segued from that into a, a sack of pigments that I have put on my pages. Y'all haven't seen me too. They had already been cataloged here and <clears throat> in my boxes. Well, it just happens to be well -o. These correspond with what's in here in pans. Each of these pans is numbered with the position that they go in up here. So that technically I could pick that color four down and it would be Gold Urker by Windsor Newton. And it is. Don't drop them. They've got heavy duty iridinium batteries, uh, magnets on the back. But don't drop it because it will come up. Um, so anyway, I got that all caught up, and I've got about four that I need to catalog and make pans of. And the rest of that sack can be put away with the other, other stuff in their permanent collection. And I had so many Daniel Smiths, I put them in a separate bucket by themselves. But I brought that up because... Which way did it go? I wanted to quickly pull the colors that she uses because there's a reason she uses them. There's a reason why any teacher uses the pigments they do. Now, that doesn't mean you have to use them, but you're not going to benefit from any of the training that you get if you do. So I always try to use the same brand and the same color if I can in my stock. So I thought about this and I thought, hey, we're going to put that to work, this system. So I got my tins out and I looked for the colors and it was, I had them in like no time at all and then found these. So that's what I did the last two days. To me, that's fun. And there is a video on that, too. Probably a couple, about five years ago. And I love it. It's working out just the way I planned. And the other thing that I did, wouldn't it be beautiful if I was that organized all over the place? 
if I have a tin of, say, Schmincke with pans, and that's the way they, they came, I'll make a swatch on the lid of my pan, in my tin, and in my catalog of colors, and I'll put them there and label them. I don't necessarily have to take them out of the tin. I mean, I don't have to keep everything in the tin, but I do want a place where I can find uh, certain colors. And a lot of times there are odd colors in, in those made to order tins that you may not have a tube of. So it's always kind of nice to have that. Any questions? See who else is here. Something must be slow. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Hmm. Sorry. Um let me know if something's quit working because the chat is not updating. Okay, I'm gonna go on. All right, Robin McClendon's July printables, which I'm really glad I got these this morning because I didn't have a clue what I was gonna do. So, whoops, what did I do there? That's right, those, that's where the tins are messing up my field of vision. Okay. I told you the link is below, and these just really, really got me to thinking. And I'll be in the field notes journals today. And these just remind me of a textured wall, like I'm pretending we're in southern Me Mexico where the Aztecs had their settlements. And these are things that Dr. V found on a wall somewhere hidden in jungle overgrowth. So that was my idea that popped into my head. It's almost looked like cave drawing stuff. See how textured that is. And there's a blank piece of paper. So, and got another, <clears throat> oh, Y'all know I love this package of Fabriano paper. Comes from Jerry's Artorama. And you get four six by nine or seven by nine pieces of the artist watercolor paper. And it's such a nice envelope. I'm going to cover one of these in this paper today. And what else have I got? I got something I can't show you yet. That wasn't smart. Okay, you're forgiven. Don't miss fixing to go into the great beyond. I have a new set of stencils from Robin McClendon. And I would love to be able to use them today. But I can't because they haven't been released yet. So, there's that. All right. Let's get out the handmade journal and see what captures our eye to make my vision come true.
I think that's cool, Paige, just the way it is. Last week we did some jelly printing or cleaning off a of plate printing. Let's put it that way. Here's the where that page started and here's where it finished after I cleaned the plate off on it. Another clean the plate full and another. Aren't those gorgeous? You don't have to work in order. See, there's a good one. That's the beauty of using your old prints and stuff because that's just a drop sheet. It's almost pretty the way it is. This is a piece of vellum that went into the Echo printing bucket in the pot of boiling water. All right, we've got some interesting pages. So I'm going to start, oh, that's the back of a signature. How about that? That wasn't it. Okay, that's it. What are you doing? What are you doing? There, that one. That's about halfway. So we're going to work on this one today. Hope y'all are having some good weather. We are here in in Arkansas, I just heard, read on the news that we are in the top four best places to live in the country. And that is astonishing and wow and don't tell anybody kind of stuff. Because you have a population boom and all of a sudden the things that made it great can't happen anymore. And we are having a lot of growth. Okay. Make sure I'm not missing anything before I go into this. Keep saying, okay, that's because I don't know where I'm going. Okay. Okay. All righty then. Bear with me, I'm waiting for a notification from the Muse. <clears throat> and it's got to be that one. And then we might work on this one. So in my thought process, I'm going to tear the, tear the edges off while I sit here and think. And see, this is why it doesn't matter that you're using junk papers because 
chances are you're going to cover them anyway. For all you jelly printers out there, this is an excellent way to use up your prints. While you can use your prints just the way they come off the plate, whoops, oopsie, um, a lot of mine are like the beginning of something, not the end of something. Even Edgar Degas did that with his monoprints. He was doing them with press or some method. And uh, he always put pastel on top of his, used it as a rough drawing for his pastel paintings. And I don't think anybody would argue with the fact that that worked for him. I don't know. You might. That was the page I was going for. Ooh. Yeah, because it's bigger. You want some of the gold? We'll cut a little bit off here. Just eyeball it. Now I'll tell you my thought process. There's a a piece for washi tape. I had it like that and my yellow's down here so I move it up and I look at this is going to be off-centered on the left. So I turned it upside down so it would be off-centered on the right. And that gets me some gold and some so I think that is where I'm going to put it. That was my thought process. <laughs> Okie doke. Now, I'm going to use my ooh -hoo. Ooh, -hoo. ooh hoo I can't yodel. And here we go. Robin is having a Jelly 101 class online. That it doesn't matter what skill level you are, you'll learn something, I guarantee. And I'd be taking it if I had a little more time. Put that over there, and I'm going to quickly quickly, she says. You want to smooth it from the inside out, from the middle all the way around. You want to make sure there are no air bubbles. And of all the tools in the world that you can purchase to do this, your hands are the best. And then you can follow it up with some sort of... I think I just used a bonus unit for the front bone folder. 
These are from Arteza. It's not what I want, but it's what I got. Still haven't found my... Now, the paper is wet. So be careful. You don't want to gouge it and pull it, because believe me, that will happen. Credit card would work. I find credit cards to be a little bit scratchy. And my favorite tool is that white catalyst blade about this big. It's here somewhere, but okay, now I'm gonna wait for this to dry. And then we'll tear those pages off of those edges. Okay, now visualize this being a cave wall or an exterior wall surrounded by greenery. I'm sticking with that one. That's my favorite thing. And I'm going to use, what am I going to use? thinking here don't tell anybody I'm going to go into um, I'm going to use fuzzy cactus And I'm going to do that to um, I lost my train of thought. I'm going to use this old sponge. First thing I'm going to do is spray it a little. Before that gets dry, I'm going to blot it. A bit of wet baby wipe, and I got a little too much. Putting a little bit of pressure on there to get that edge off. Now that's a little bit better. Water disappeared, soaked right in. Which, of course, it will. Now I'm trimming. Not that much. Okay, that was Seth's Paper Artsy Fresco Finish Fuzzy Cactus. 
I just wanted to knock that back a little. Note, you need to really leave it until it's dry, until the glue is dry. A neat leaf pattern. Okay, so I'm going to going to move this one out of the way and let it dry good. And I'm going to switch over to the matcha tea journal. I'm looking. <laughs> Joyce is working hard. Come on, you guys. All right. This is some of the pages we've done. Did that one last week with Seth's new paints. I think. Yeah, that's it. Now we've got one over here that's got blue in it. Let's just take a look. Butter brush. I keep saying I'm going to put water in these water pans. There's the pipette. bought these, I think I got a hundred of them, in a pack on Amazon for a couple bucks. They're real handy. Now then, I have a feeling that I want to cut this out. I want to use this. Remember that your inkjet is going to run. That's what they do. Great thing about printables is you don't have to worry about ruining them because you can go print another one. Or saving them. That's usually my trick. Oh, I want to save it. And somebody's going to find it when you move out of your studio in 30, 40 years and wonder why in the world you saved something like that. Easy peasy. It's better than fussy cutting any day.
we had kids here last week from Denver. Nothing says you have to stick with straight lines either. I sent ten year old granddaughter home with a canvas bag full of art stuff because she likes to teach her younger siblings about painting. That was mom, I can catch that later. Just have a little more control. There. Better. I don't think I like it better there. Let me check on you guys. Yeah, I really thought this would these pages would start flattening out some. There, I like that crooked. And look, I don't have to cut any off the tail end. If you should happen to tear a piece, just glue it back down. Everything's down good. Yeah, that's quite nice. Nice organic shape here. When you um, do what I just did and you don't really have anything on your mind, go with your instinct. So that's going to be really special. And we'll get this swoop right here.
you would have thought I gave, of course, it was a lot of stuff. It was, she says, I've only ever had paints from uh, the Dollar Tree. And I went, oh, my goodness. Girl, I wish you lived by me. I gave her a Cotman watercolor set. I gave her a little novelty set made by Pantone, and it's really got pretty good paint in it. I gave her a set of magic pencils because uh, I got two. It's one of those deals where Amazon, you lose one, and then Amazon says, just keep the other one. Not bad. Don't let yourself get stuck interviewing stuff. I'm going to put that up there because it kind of, to me, says tree trunk. And with this kind of saying leaf, There you go. Okay, so let's put this down before we rethink it. Remember, there are no rights and wrongs. It's better at the bottom because it balances. So it could be whatever you want it to be. You may be looking at the top of the tree and this leaf is just where it should be. Or if we're looking at the top of the tree... Give it a little angle for some fun. The reason I love Uhu is because it's a dry sticky glue, dry-ish. If you use matte medium on stuff like this or a liquid PVA, it's going to be wet forever. Yeah, then that's kind of a pretty little page to do something with. And we used a lot of what was on there. Let's go back and check on the other one. It's still wet, so I'm going to get the dryer. You dry on the back of the sheet as well as from the front, you'll get heat all the way through it. It'll heat up quicker. tear that off so we can see where we are.
very nice, very nice. Now then, still damp, but not bad. Let's make sure there's not something. Well, that wouldn't be there, would it? This was what was cut off. I'm going to put that down right there. I know you've heard me say this a million times. Aluminum ruler, if it's got cork, turn it over. So that straight edge can be as close to your paper as you can get it. And you get a nice raggedy edge that will blend into the paper beautifully. Blended in so well, I could hardly not see it. I want a piece of my vintage tape. I love having the excuse to use this. Wax paper, shiny side up. Put tape on it. And this tape comes, this is the old fashioned scotch type tape that's clear. So just tape rows of it on there and then put shellac, alcohol ink, you know, anything that you've got handy. I use both. And there you have some vintage tape. Now, let's see, I will use some wet glue. Just a little crinkle. A little extra glue because stuff's never that sturdy. I'm gonna go ahead and put one back there because it's kind of weak when it's wet. Good excuses to use it. Echo dyeing with some papers just turns them brittle. Oops. I could be a ventriloquist by keeping a 
pen in my mouth all the time. There. I was raised up so and so. These little stainless steel pens in the Art Glitter Company's glue. Okay, yeah. If y'all didn't know it already, I'm a Seth Ruby. Just mix it straight on the plate. This way I really don't lose any paint. This is the same plate, guys, that last week gave us this. If we're lucky, we might be able to get another one today. I'm going to do green... Do a little bit of London night. I want a dull green. Looking for it, I found it. The brush of the day. I'm gonna paint leaves. I'm putting the brush down flat and then lifting it up and that makes us a little tip I rarely ever use green straight out of the tube You got it. Lay it down. Splay the bristles. That's the fat end of your leaf. And then just pick it up. And there's your point. What's your point? Now, if this were a vine, it would be all over the place.
Remember, our business is to give a viewer something to look at that makes their uh, imagination run. We want them to think about things that they've experienced. Here's a little bit of butter. I'm going to put that in. Later. Um, green. Green, green. I guess I might maybe mix a little. Just no problem. There's teal. Let's just put a little of that down. Green patina. Need that much. The brownish color will help neutralize things. And now I need a yellow. And by mixing it. All across the page, I get all kinds of different looks. Try a little bit of blueberry. I'd rather that. Yeah, I just want to float some of these darker ones. Changing the size a little. Creating an illusion, that's all we're doing. which is the reason I started painting in mixed media, is to break my habit of realistic painting. And what has happened is I haven't painted at all. <laughs> but I've got to because I've got a couple more brands i got to paint. It's beginning to look like something. Huh. 
All right, now, hell no, brown cow. I'm gonna take toffee. A little bit of concrete to lighten it. This is a grade white, and I'm going to rinse my brush. I just had this thought, so we're going to go for it. What if we painted an archway? See them bricks? <laughs> That one looked like a leaf. All right, now let's put, let's go ahead on down this side. Now let's do some steps. Mixing a little bit of the dark blue with the toffee just so that it will make a little bit darker. Now, if you didn't feel like doing this much, you could always find one of Robin's printables with an old door. Now I need... A little bit of light. The same thing. A little bit of light.
Yeah, I think I need to take a little break. Look. Hey, Linda, how are you? Um, <coughs> cheap wax paper from the dollar store, shiny side up, tape from the dollar store. It's clear tape like Scotch used to be. And lay it out in strips and then color it with shellac and alcohol ink. Just shellac will work and just alcohol ink will work. And then it's here on this page for you to just tear off and crinkle it and make it look old. Are you out of school? Wow, you're traveling, huh? Now I'm just playing around here. Wish I could master the art of just getting one drop. Got to make this realistic. I'm just painting sort of hints of blocks back here. Now then back to the green. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Need some of that darker. This is just a suggestion of an old wall. Now, could I have done this before? Of course I could. Did I think about it? Nope. That is easy enough to fix. All right, let's see if I can Clean that up. By painting a few leaves on top.
I'm just going to stumble some yellow and white right there. Going to add to the illusion. of a Mayan wall. There you have it. Mayan wall. I guess I could put some... I need a real thin acrylic brush. Or... Or, ta-da, oh, get some of this navy blue. Excuse me. Good Lord, Vicky. This is just going to further the illusion a bit. Any kind of a sharp edge. I got these at Tuesday morning once a long time ago when we used to go shopping. They're like $14 for a set rather than $30 or $40. Now, if I really wanted to make this a little bit more realistic, I could get some shiny paint. And that would give us a contrast. Let's see what I've got handy. Chiny. What's chiny? Here's a pebio. This is Pebrio's iridescent Dinah. Oh, yeah. Just little dancing marks to kind of look like sun. Dappled light.
That's why I love journals. Doesn't matter if you go too far. On that, my friends, is it. And I'm going to roll this out. So it'll just be sitting here, a soupy mass on this plate. And we'll start building up for the next. What do you can do with that, I wonder? Look from the look away, look away. Right on schedule. And this is one of Robin's. Let me see what else is going on over here. Glad you all are here. Okay, drink of water and got to get creative. I love those pieces cut out. My matcha tea. Oh, here's the butter I never used on the other one. Looks pretty with that page. Let's see if this floats my boat. This is the Tim Holtz collage paper. I'm not feeling it. And I got some new washies, but they're, and I don't know where they came from, but they're, they're narrow. I found these in my studio. Birds, stamps. So if that was the case, then, oops, I just stuck my finger in the green. Um, hmm. <laughs> Think, think, think. Hang on one second. I've got to go to the other side of the studio.
got these old postcards, but they're on glossy paper. These are also available in my um, online store. They're so big, too, where you can print them. And then that way you can control the darkness. Muscle. Let me go tell Randy something real quick. I thought he'd already gone. Hey, Randy. Hello? I'm going to be down here in about 10 or 15 minutes. You want to leave them? What? If you want to leave the puppies, I'll be finished. Well, they're not going to go with you. Okay, I thought I heard you say you were taking them. Okay. Too hot for puppies. Hang on, guys. Here's some scrap paper. Ooh, that green might work. Be nice. And look at that. I love that stamp. Copper leaf. Some decors. Y'all remember I collected this stuff all last summer. Okay, I think I can make something with that. I said after stamp. I knew I had some more. And another one. All right. You know what? Nothing says I can't cut that in half. No rules, remember? Look at me. I don't want to cover it up. So if I use that, then I don't need these papers. I could use a few travel stickers. Good color. Three, a nice round number. Keep eating the air. Okay, what else did I pull out? I've had these forever. And don't ask me why I had them. Yeah. Now then, we're going to have to put, let's see. 
I need something hard. Oh, I need this. I'm going to use black suet, distress oxide. I'm going to use one of the circles. Right in the middle. I didn't intend to do that. I know, skeleton leaves in their copper. Perfect stencil. Ooh, Seth, baby. Overlap things when you can, because that makes them look like they're part of the scene. And I forgot the map. I still got a good one, though. I started with a bunch of room on my desk. Okay, so this one. i go here. I'm using, uh, you know what? I better use um, the heavier stuff. Fiber tap. Sold in a different name from Hobby Lobby to Walmart. But I think it's the very same stuff. Ooh, boy, you get high off that. Not that I know what getting high on something means. It's wiggling. Just wait a minute for that to settle down. And if this stuff ever, the fabric track ever starts to get too thick for you. Just add some acetone to it. That's what's in it already. A little bit. It's really fun working with somebody else's ideas.
even if you just take them and put more jelly plate prints on top. You can alter the look. <coughs> it's still <coughs> still Robin, but <coughs> it's got my touch on it. And you can't tell it from a an original jelly print. That's the cool part. All right, we're cooking. Oh, damn it. Of course, they didn't leave me on seam or anything to get this sticker out. There she goes. Come on. Ta da. Now, if that ever comes up, I can always glue it back down. Lots of companies on Amazon sell stuff from AliExpress. They just add their markup on it. Um, sometimes they have it in stock, can ship it right out, which is worth paying a little bit more for. But if they don't stock it, you're going to wait the same amount of time than if you just ordered it yourself. And they are highly respectable and safe. And if you're concerned about a credit card issue, just get a credit card used just for that. But I've never had a minutes problem. Ever, ever, ever. So tickets cute. That'll give three of those. You gotta watch the. Sometimes it's free shipping. Since COVID, it's been um, kind of dicey on the. They're they're now saying twenty to fifty days on everything. Sometimes you get it quicker. But if you're buying multiples, thinking you can save on shipping, if it has shipping, you won't because the shipping is per piece. Now we've got one more thing. I'm just putting the glue right down there. It's fine. I don't know why. It's 
If it doesn't hold, I've got more glue. Ow! Just tuck it through a wad of glue. I'm going to have to do it by feel. There. Yeah, then. There, is, there are two pages. A spread using Robin McClendon's July printables. Available. A link below. And in the other book, we did one page. How about that? And next week, we'll have a good amount of paint on the jelly to get that stuff off. All right, let me see if anybody is hollering at me. Nope. We had a quiet day in the peanut gallery, which is fine. Fine, fine, fine. I like that. Turned out pretty good. For those who may have come in a little late, here's the page we did over here. <laughs> Not exactly what I had planned, but that's okay. It's Dr. Victoria Rose Bloom's Field Notes book, my version. I like that little bit of green over here. And that is it, folks. So, I'm going to turn y'all off and let's see, I got to do my thing first. This is for YouTube to. Uh, put the end screens on. So just ignore it. Bye. I'll see you later. And thank you everybody for coming.